Well, if my SEAL career had ended with a mistake, I would have figured out what my next mission was going to be. That's that's what I would have done. I mean, I would have said, okay, I like that job. I failed at it. What can I learn from that? And what can I do next differently to make sure I don't make that mistake again? Mm-hmm. I'm going to learn from the past, but I'm not going to dwell on it. Mm-hmm. There's no point in dwelling on it. The only point in dwelling on it is to learn from it. So, so that's what I would do here. And then I would take what I learned from my experiences of where I failed, and I would also take the positive things that I learned, because you even that, even that failure is a positive. Even that failure is a positive, because you realize, you realize the value of the opportunity that you had, and you blew it, and you're like, okay, I'm never gonna let that happen again. Lesson learned. <laughs> I'm ha- actually stoked I get to learn that lesson. Because there's gonna be more opportunities that come up in life. And you got to make sure that you don't disregard those opportunities when they come up. And I, so I would have taken those lessons learned, take that, take that failure and turn it into something positive and made good things happen when I figured out what my new mission and new career was going to be. Pretty straightforward. Mm. You, can, you can do so much good. And, you know, that's going back to the story that I told about uh, Jeff in the beginning of this podcast. One of the wording some of the wording that I struggled with in the kids story and again it's on it's the warrior kid podcast one of the things that I struggled with in telling the story was I ended up saying Jeff had gone too far and he couldn't correct himself yeah. he had gone too far and he couldn't come back yeah. and that's a real hard thing to tell a person and it's a real hard thing to tell a kid and the, the reason why I left it that way, the reason why I kept it like, listen, you can make mistakes that you can't come back from, especially as a kid. You can make mistakes that you can't come back from. They're pretty rare, right? Mm-hmm. There's not too many mistakes that are so grievous that you can't recover from them. Mm-hmm. Like this guy. Hey, man, he made a mistake. He failed a drug test, given a general discharge. That sucks. Mm-hmm. Guess what? He can do all kinds of good in the world. He can make up for that tenfold. He can start a business, make money. He can create a family. He can raise great kids. And there's so many things that he can make sure his kids understand that and know that and learn from it. And he can make sure some other neighborhood kids and high school kids and grade school kids, he can make such an impact on the world by learning from that mistake. So it's very, it's a harsh thing to say like, hey, there's some things you can't. Now, what this guy can't recover from and this is what the, this is the f- uh, fact that you have to face. And this is why I told it this way in the kid's story. Mm. He didn't understand. When he made that mistake, he didn't understand that there's some mistakes you cannot recover from. He can't be a pilot now. Mm. It's not going to happen. Zero chance of him being a military pilot. That's the way it works. So if I would have had the opportunity to tell him when he was 13 years old, hey, listen, bro. I get it. You're going to step outside the box sometimes, but there's some mistakes that you can make that you'll never be able to recover from. So think about what you're doing before you do them. You need to think about what you're doing before you do them. And if I would have had the opportunity to tell him that when he was 13 years old, he might have had a better decision making process when he got older. That's why I left it that way for those kids so that they recognize that there are some things that you do as as a person, as a kid that you cannot recover from. You cannot recover from them. Now, that being said, when you take this and you put it in perspective as an adult, see, and as an adult, you have a much broader world to be a part of. Mm -hmm. And just because he's not going to be a pilot, a military pilot, by the way, just because he's not going to be a military pilot, there's all kinds of other opportunities out there. And you can explain that to an adult, but it's hard to explain that to a kid. Mm -hmm. So what other opportunities? I mean, even if, especially like, oh, you want to be a pilot? Cool. You can become a civilian pilot. And you can, you know, you can fly. You can make things happen that way. But what we're not going to do and what I would not do is dwell on the past and dwell on what the, the big missed opportunity is. Because guess what? That's, an, that's a missed opportunity that there's all kinds of people in the world would love for that to be their biggest mistake that they've made. That's, the, that's it. They mm-hmm. would love. There's someone sitting in prison right now. That's like, man, I wish all I did was get a fail a drug test and I could have learned my lesson. Instead, I'm sitting here in prison. Or I got injured. 
really bad because I did something that I shouldn't have done or I made a bad decision or I got someone that I care about hurt or injured because I took them in a, in a car when I was drunk. Like those are the kind of mistake. This mistake, sure, it's a bummer. Guess what? There are infinitely, infinitely worse mistakes that he could have made. Infinitely worse. Mm. So you're all right, man. You're okay. Learn from it. Don't dwell on it. Move on and go go do something really positive in the world. What statement are you making? The psychology is savagery. I wasn't the best runner. But what I did was I found the work schedules out of my competition. And I made sure they saw me running day and night. I tried to get in their fucking heads. I got a video the other day of this UFC fighter Ferguson. This motherfucker weighs in. And the USC is fucking canceled. He wasn't just weighing in. He was getting the fucking head of his components. What he did was this. He wanted you to remember his fucking hands and elbows slice you the fuck up. Remember this. Stay hard at all times. Savagery. There's a distinct difference between a champion and someone who's this good. Let's use boxing, for instance. It's a 12-round championship bout. At the 11th round, they both go to the corners. Someone that's good sits there and thinks to himself, I fucking have given everything I have. Hopefully, I can get through the 12th round. A champion, he sits in that corner while all of his people are talking to him. He ain't hear shit. All he's thinking about is, I have to find what I haven't given. It's that mentality that truly separates the champions from the motherfuckers who are just good. Stay hard. Back in the day when I played sports, there was one fucking drill that I hated doing. The coach would have a fucking whistle in his mouth. And basically, we had to sit there and run in place. We ran in place until he blew that whistle. When he blew that whistle, we hit the dirt and bounced up again and started running in place again. And this drill went on and on and on. The one thing that sucked about that drill was the coach was in total control of everything. How long the drill went, when he blew the whistle for us to hit the dirt, when we got back up and started running in place, and it was mind numbing. That drill reminded me a lot about life. I think a lot of us out here, we don't have control. We don't have the whistle. There's someone out there blowing that fucking whistle and we hit the dirt. Some of us choose to stay down, but it's that motherfucker who constantly gets up as fast as they can. Those are the motherfuckers that make it in life. So it's our job to always be ready for the whistle.